you'll notice here this folder structure is trying to help you make decisions about what component to choose. Do we want an online plotter with an output file or do we want an online plotter without? The online plotter is there when the simulation is running, but as soon as you click the close button, it's gone. You can't get those plots back unless you rerun your si simulation. There is a version of this online plotter that will also dump all of the plotted values out to a text file so that you could then recreate the plot using Excel or any other plotting package. I hardly ever do that. I use the online plotter for debugging, making sure my simulation is running the way I understand it should be. My formal output, I will use a printer component. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to choose this online plotter without a file. I'm going to double click on this thing. So it, it's saying how many variables do we want to plot on the left axis and how many variables do we want to plot on the right axis? Well, I'm going to say one and one. It says, what's the min and max for my left axis? I'm going to go between zero degrees C and 50 degrees C. On the right axis, I'm going to plot my flow rate. And I don't really know what to use here, so I don't know. I'm just going to say 10,000. Perhaps some of you are saying, well, you set it to be a 635 CFM fan, but the output flow rate, you'll notice, is going to come out in kilograms per hour. I don't really know what 635 CFM equates to in kilograms per hour, so I'm just going to arbitrarily choose 10,000. The number of plots per simulation, we'll come back and sort of pick these off later. I switch to the input tab. Here it is adjusted this so that I've got one left axis variable and one right axis variable. Now, if I had gone back here and I'd said, well, I want two on my left axis, you'll see that this has now adapted itself to the parameter value that I happened to choose. So here I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to say T underscore out for the outlet temperature of my fan. And down here on my right axis, I'm going to call this M out for the outlet flow rate of my fan, mass flow rate. Don't put spaces in these. It won't understand they're not two different things. This is a component that has special cards. In this particular case, the special cards are asking me for axis titles, temperature. Yes, that's what I'm plotting. On this side, I want flow rate and it's in kilograms per hour i'll just leave this alone down here graph one or maybe i maybe i want to say fan plot here these labels are encased in double quotes okay so i've got two components now i need to provide some information that flows from one to the other i'm going to use this linking tool so i'm going to click once and then I'm going to drag over to the component to which I want to pass information. I click. Now I've got a link made. I want to plot the outlet air temperature. So I'm going to click once on this and click once over here. You see that the blue text has now turned black saying, hey, you've made a connection here. It's not particularly useful here. But if I were to look at another connection that involved this online plotter, I would see oh, hey, I've connected something to left axis variable one already. And I said I wanted to look at the outlet flow rate, so there we go. I've made my two connections, click OK. Now, if I run my simulation, something vaguely more interesting happens. I've got a plot, and it looks like my outlet temperature is plotted in red, and my outlet flow rate is plotted in, in pink here. You can use this black background if you prefer. You can use a white background. If you hold down the shift key and move the mouse back and forth, you'll see that the labels have changed into the value. This simulation is not very interesting, obviously, because we've got a constant temperature going into our fan. And you can see that the outlet temperature is 21.84. It went in at 20 degrees C. It's coming out at 21.84. So however I set this fan up, it's picking up a fair amount of heat 
as it flows through there. And I can see that the flow rate is 1,286 kilograms per hour. You can change the scale temporarily by clicking either on the top or the bottom of it. So if I click here, a little window should pop up. You can change the, you can change the scale, let's say 10,000 is too high, I can change it to 5,000. When I run the simulation again, it's gonna go back to 10,000. You can change that permanently in the online plotter parameter list, but that's how to change it temporarily. You can also turn on and off these traces by clicking on the names up here. So sometimes these things get kind of complicated. You can have up to 10 things on the left and up to 10 things on the right. You can imagine that if you've got 20 lines scattered all over your online plot, it may be a little bit tricky to figure out what's going on, so you can turn them on and off. If I want to run an entire year, obviously this online plot becomes almost impossible to read when it's running an entire year. I'm going to I'm going to kill it here. I kind of brushed over a couple of the parameters that are in in type 65, these ones down at the bottom. This one, this number of plots per simulation, by default it's one, and that's how many of those graphs it's going to produce. If I'm running for a year, and I want plot on a weekly basis, I could set this to 52. That would give me about one plot per week. The other thing, I don't know if you noticed, x-axis grid points. By default, it's set to, to 12. You can change that to seven so that it's something like a week. Now, this will work, and I'll run it just to sort of show you. Now I'm gonna get a plot for each week, and it's just gonna keep flickering and going. If I want, I can pause the simulation. You say stop, and then you see down here, there's a little red arrow that allows you to scroll back through the simulation and then scroll forward again. And you can resume it by pressing F8. This down here is what I was mentioning as the x-axis grid points. I've said there are now seven of these instead of the 12. Okay, that's fine. So I said that there are 52, but now if I go back to just simulating 168 hours, it's still gonna make 52 plots, which is a bit annoying. This is pretty useless at that point. So what I tend to do is instead of just hard coding a number here, I'll create a variable name, string in transit 17, and I'll call this n plots. And then I'll make a calculation of what n plots is. Now, it turns out that n plots is a built in variable in transit 17, or in transit 18 rather. It's not in transit 17. If you're in transit 17 and you want to make it, it's essentially n plots is equal to two built in variables stop minus start, the quantity divided by, and then however many hours you want. 168, or if you want daily plots, you can make, excuse me, not 124, but 24. Now, I'm not gonna do this because it's already defined in my simulation, so I'll delete that. And now if I run it, I'm running a week now, it should create one plot, but if I go and change it to say running, I don't know, the January, 744 hours, now it should create about four plots or so. What I'm going to do is this is I'm going to call this temp plot, not temp as in temporary, but temp as in temperatures. Then I'm going to get another online plotter. Here I'm going to call this one energy plot. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to say there's six things on the left axis, zero things on the right axis. And I have no idea what the scale I want is, so I'm just going to guess 0 to 100,000. I don't need to worry about the rest of these down here. Interesting little tidbit here is that you remember last week, or last session, I changed this number of plots per simulation from 1 to a variable name called n plots, so that I would get, by default, weekly plots. If there's a conflict here, it turns out that what happens is Transus pays attention to what the first online plotter that it encounters says for the value of these parameters. It's 
not smart enough to have multiple X axes for the different online plotters that we're going to use. So it inherits all of the subsequent ones inherit from the first one. So if I set n plots and X axis grid points to seven, that will be true for all of the online plotters. So here we've got this energy one. If I want to be consistent about things, I could change that to variable name and call it n plots too, but it won't have any effect. These will be populated when I make the connections as we saw before. And here, now I've got on my left axis variable, I don't have temperature, I have energy, and it's gonna be in kilojoules per hour. And then this one I'm not using, so I'll just I'll delete that for now. And I'm gonna call this down here, I'll call this energy, I'll call this loads. Okay, now I'm gonna make my connection from the building to the energy plot, and I want to look at Q heat main, Q cool main, Q heat living, Q cool living, Q heat second floor, Q cool second floor. I'll run the simulation again. Note down here at the bottom, now there's graph one and another tab called loads and if i scoot over to the loads tab you can see that there's one line being plotted here if i hold down the shift key i can see that all of the others are zero and the q heat of the main floor is ranging oh up to what about ten thousand One thing you can do is if you want to create a double online plotter, you can show two onlines in the same time. So I want graph one on the top and loads on the bottom. I'm just going to do this temporarily. So there we go. A little hard to see here. I'm going to change my scale. There, that's a little bit more visible. So when we see up here, that blue line not coming down below 21, and in fact, both the living and the main zones are bottoming out at 21. Then if you look down on the plot below, we're seeing that there's some heating load there. Unfortunately, there's not a way of seeing the values on both plots, so whichever plot you click on, so here I'm clicking on the top plot, and the labels up at the top of the screen show what's going on in the top plot. If I want to see what's going on in the bottom plot, I just have to make that the active plot by clicking on it. And then you see that the labels up here have changed. And here you can see that, in fact, there's heating load going on. 